chairperson of the committee, uh, councillor and committee members. Um, today I'm represented by Mutibi, the executive head of uh, regulatory, myself and Jimmy Pack, senior manager of uh, regulatory compliance. We have a brief uh, two slides, just um, our observation of uh, the procedures, the, the happenings of the last two days. Um, so observation and res of responses and conclusion. Um, it's the case of what we think is the objectives, the evaluation of where we are and where we think we should be going. As the objectives, we uh, believe that um, it all started off with the 2007 report commissioned by the DOC. There's also the Minister's uh, 2007 policy directive as well as the, uh, the current Minister's call to work closely with authority in the implementation of local loop unbundling. Uh, further, there's also the request from the Portfolio Committee on Communications to conduct a regulatory impact assessment, which we believe will provide certainty in this process. Uh, there's also the 2020 broadband commitment where there should be 100% broadband penetration by the year 2020. And also ECOS's uh, stated key objective of local loop is to significantly increase the low broadband penetration in South Africa. Um, evaluation is one of, one of the matters of legal process and procedure. We, f we think there's the legal interpretation of Chapter 8 and facilities leasing definition to unbundle. Uh, as we heard from Vodacom, you can get various opinions and um, so unfortunately we don't have an opinion, um, so uh, it's still subjective. Uh, we still believe fixed line local loop is not equal to wireless local loop unbundling. Uh, for example, MABSA spoke about Bitstream, however, they didn't speak about the other three options. IS spoke about uh, unbundling at the MSC, which we believe is basically network unbundling or it's an MVNO arrangement. We were asked the question, uh, is there a definition by the ITU of a wireless loop, global loop unbundling? We couldn't find a definition, so I believe there's no definition. However, in the US market, there is a definition of wireless local loop, which is the uh, uh, connection between a wireless phone to a telephone point. So I would believe that is your cordless phone. Um, we also believe that the authority should publish a list of essential facilities. With respect to the discussion paper itself, we feel that uh, there's a lot of uncertainty. For example, we're not sure whether the authority is seeking to come up with the terms of reference of the working groups. Um, and with regards to the working groups, we, uh, there was also mentioned that focus should apply to the rural areas and how uh, the rollout of uh, or the unwinding of the local loop will assist in uh, the rollout or penetration of broadband in these areas. The scope of the local loop unwinding discussion paper, there was a lot of discussion about bitstream, whether it should be included or not. There was the inclusion of open access network at the edge and then also the wholesale data offers whether it should be part of this process or it should be part of another process, um, a completely new process. And lastly, the wireless local loop should be, should be part of this or not. We also we believe that alternate fixed technologies with high bandwidth is more suitable for high demand data services. Wireless is uh, not the appropriate technology for high demand bandwidth services. Uh, there was a mention by Telcom that new investments uh, should be separate from local loop unbundling. I think that might create a bit of uh, needs more work on what looks uh, needs to be looked at more carefully. The access line deficit will be paid by access seekers if the independently proven that it exists. We believe if there are myths or no myths, this adds no value to the process. Local book, uh, local loop unbundling should continue without or with. Uh, without the, the type of myths that's been spoken about. We also recommend oh, uh, the uh, phased approach of uh, full loop, uh, fixed line local loop unbundling and believe it's more practical. Um, we believe also a, a regulatory impact assessment will provide certainty of job retention in the market. Uh, we also recommend that maybe um, a possibility of implementing a pilot project with regards to local loop unbundling and also to a certain extent adopt BT's open reach principles. So I'll see in conclusion reiterates the support to the authority in finalizing the process required for unbundling the fixed line local loop. Salsi encourages the authority to show that an en enabling environment is created to allow MVNOs and MVNAs to pros prosper. 
fixed uh, line local loop must be used as an opportunity to satisfy the appetite of young entrepreneurs in rural areas. We also believe that uh, the relevant fixed line information must be made available to the special committees to continue with establishing a framework for ensuring the fixed, that fixed line local loop unbinding takes place. Without this information, we believe these committees would not function. Due to the complexity, the direct timelines and the interests of the public, the authority must focus on the process for the implementation of fixed line local loop unbinding. Any deviation will lead to a delay and other unintended consequences. Lastly, to ensure regulatory certainty, the authority must continue engaging with the DOC and the PCC to develop regulations that align to policy. We may think due to the legal uh, matter, the main we need for a high intervention. Thank you, Arish. <clears throat> Once more, good morning, uh, committee members. Yeah, I, I think the, the, the brief response that Celsi has shared with you this morning, we just wanted to re-emphasize the fact, I think, that MTN has spoken about in terms of regulatory certainty <clears throat> and the whole issue of stability. Now, one of our observations as well, Chair, is it, it was quite clear from Telcom's presentation yesterday that South Africa is ready for a review for policy. I think for the fact that, you know, Telcom still has ownership through government and the policy directive came from government itself. And if Telcom still believes that it's not actually ready to implement what government wants it to do, I think we shouldn't just look, overlook that statement because it might be telling us something. And, and, and I think as responsible licensees as well, if there are still policy gaps, perhaps this is where government needs to come and give that instruction. Because if government believes that unbundling of the local loop will create further more jobs and bring sustainable business for rural and urban, it must be government that makes that pronouncement. And ICASA, we believe, must implement that policy. Obviously, taking into consideration our contributions. And on the issue of job creation, Chair, we just want to re-emphasize the issue around perhaps thinking of a pilot project. Yesterday I was quite excited to see now that, you know, ICASA has published the underserved area, the lists. We now have an opportunity. I think let's be innovative, like as we said from Celsi. Identify one of those underserved areas. Let's go with Telcom. Let's put a model and see if in terms of practical implementation of the unbundling, what does it mean technically and practically? We shouldn't shy away because if it has been done in other countries, we can do it differently in South Africa. And I still believe that any of that intervention will actually re-emphasize the fact that why is unbundling important in our country. And the other issue, perhaps, which on a lighter note, I mean, from Telcom, I was quite impressed yesterday. It shows that from a leadership point of view, there's definitely a deviation from the past because, you know, as a taxpayer, I've always been worried in the past why telecom is not providing services to why I stay in rural. But if the new leadership is of the view that let's stop the whole issue of unbundling and let's look at other possible business model. My colleague from telecom we had yesterday, they, they couldn't even you know, share much of what they are thinking of because they are in the close period. I believe there might be some very good innovative ways that telecom is looking at and we must give them credit for that. But at the same time, I think we can't wait because some of us, we want to see those services being provided as a matter of agency. Then in conclusion, <clears throat> I think ICASA, we need to go back in terms of Section 2. Um, I mean, in terms of our assessment, there are quite a number of objectives which we believe the unbundling of the local loop provides a platform for ICASA to implement some of those objectives. And in particular, I'm looking at Section 2P. Now, in terms of promotion of SMMEs and cooperatives, we all know that ICASA has tried, obviously, with government, with the underserved areas. And we believe that the implementation of Section 2P will be one of those that could fast track the issues of development of entrepreneurs, SMMEs, and cooperatives in both rural and urban. And I want to point again chair in the issue of section 2n i think in terms of consumers i want to re-emphasize in terms of choice it becomes important when we talk of quality of variety of services 
I, I get worried if today, 2011, in terms of our telecommunication infrastructure, like as we showed you yesterday, we still have facilities that are still not properly maintained. I think as a, as a citizen of this country, it's something that we need to make sure that ICASA, in terms of your own operation for monitoring and enforcement, some of these things should be looked at urgently because, as I've indicated yesterday, I'm concerned about the issue of safety, environmental issues as well, because we stay in those areas and we wouldn't like to see some of those uh, cables hanging all the time. It's not good even in terms of bylaws. Now, as CELSI, we want to re-emphasize we support the process, but we still appeal to, to ICASA that don't rush on any of the processes that you want to engage. I think uh, Harish did indicate the fact that Chapter 8, Chapter 10, if there's a need to deviate from the original mandate of fixed wireless and including mobile, we believe that we need to look at other options in terms of other phasing, phase approach, but we don't want to take the legal route. I can tell you upfront, as SLC, I don't want to see myself in court arguing on things that I believe if government wants to do, they must be done. I think it's just a question of how can we as a collective put that together. And on that note, Chair, I would like to thank Council and the committee and opportunity for us to present. And that's, that's all from CELSI. Thank you very much. Thank you, CELSI. I have some questions from the floor. Um, if there are any more, please send them through. So, C, have you had a have you had a chat to Advin? Because they seem to have an awful lot of questions for you. Uh, you mean today and yesterday, or uh, prior to today and yesterday? Generally. Uh, no, we haven't had a chat to them. It was just a greeting. <laughs> Can I suggest you meet? As regulatory or as South Sea Company? As South Sea Company. Yeah, no, should we be open to okay. me? Um, uh, <coughs> okay, we'll do these questions anyway. With reference to international roamers on your network, which South African laws and regulations allow operators who are not licensed in South Africa to use your access network to deliver voice and data services to their customers? Um, as LCE, as a licensee, we can appoint... Uh, uh, any agency on behalf um, of ourselves to provide services. So if they um, do uh, provide the services within the ambit of our license, we feel that's no problem. Okay. In the same light, can operators who are licensed in South Africa use your access network to deliver voice and data service to their customers, subject to the, these operators obtaining GSM Association membership prior to going live? I'm not so clear about the question, but uh, like we said, we're providing, uh, we, I mean, we're setting up an MVNE platform and yeah. we, uh, um, uh, as priority, encouraging discussions with other uh, parties to, uh, to enter into commercial relationships. Okay. Uh, <coughs> another question from the same party. We've heard that Neotel is interested in using Telcom's Copper Local Loop and ISPs are interested in Bitstream Access. Now, if Telcom were to say, Neotel and ISPs, you're all welcome. However, you must use our customer care, billing, and prepaid charging systems, and not your own systems. Would you consider this as a ridiculous or an acceptable requirement? Uh, see, I think as a licensee, uh, you know, these questions, if you uh, look at your license, you look at the end user subscriber charter, quality of service requirements. As a licensee, we are supposed to provide customer care services. So uh, it's an obligation. Uh, so why would one licensee carry the, uh, another licensee's uh, obligation? If it's, if it's commercially agreed, fine. If it's not, then the other licensee must meet the obligation and provide their own customer care services. This is similar to CPS, um, where requesting licensees uh, 
uh, we believe should also have their own customer care to, uh, what do you call it, uh, take uh, customer complaints from our customers who's using CPS at that point in time. So what you're saying is that you should be dealing with your own customers and any third party uh, should be dealing with their customers? Like I say, in terms of license uh, obligations, mm -hmm. you must provide customer care services to your subscribers. Okay. In the same light, you state that the MVNO, MVNE model can be used to allow other operators to provide services. When I asked yesterday if other MVNE operators would be allowed to connect to your networks, you stated that this is not required as you have your own MVNE. Why must another operator be forced to use your customer care billing <coughs> HLR and prepaid charging system? Uh, I think there's, a, there's the understanding of MVNE, uh, the understanding of MVNO seems to be confused. The, uh, there can be two types of relationship. Uh, a relationship with, where, where you have where, uh, the, request, uh, the requesting party can request the licensees to provide all of those services or they can opt to provide them on their own. So, like uh, we also mentioned yesterday, it's subject to negotiation if you want to, uh, and, and uh, uh, commercial uh, arrangement. We're not saying we choose one of the other. Okay, thank you very much. Do we have any more questions for Sosi? Okay. <coughs> it, it looks like there's some negotiation required between yourselves and various other parties. And we thank you for your time um, <coughs> and for your presentation.